Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today we are going to be talking about tire modeling. So essentially what happened was earlier today I was playing a video game and I realized that I haven't made a video on tire modeling. I know we have talked about tire modeling in a lot of previous videos but we haven't discussed about it so I thought I should just make this video and talk about it. It's not going to be a very comprehensive video talking about in each and every detail about the tire modeling but yeah, uh, something's better than nothing so let's get started. So essentially, today we are going to be talking about uh, Pajeka model or magic formula if you want to call it. So the reason it's called magic formula is because there is no physical correlation to why this equation exists. So it's a semi-empirical formula which means that we had a set of data from the tire testing which is done in the tire factory so when we say tire testing that doesn't mean we are testing the tires for fatigue or its durability but essentially you have the tire uh, you test it on a road wheel or a belt type tire testing machine you put vertical load you sweep the tire from plus 15 degrees slip angle to minus 15 degrees slip angle just an example it uh, depends from manufacturer to manufacturer with increasing vertical load and the load cells in the tire testing machine essentially captures that those data points, plots it, uh, gives you in form of a data set, and then you ask your computational software package to generate the best curve fit for that particular data set. So the reason it's called semi-empirical is because we just don't give the computer data set and ask it to fill out all the, or give us a formula for second or third degree, third degree level of, uh, equation and do the curve fit for us now so essentially we have a equation and we ask the computer to find the coefficient values which fits in between those equation uh, between that equation and gives us the best value so that's why it's called semi-empirical and the reason it's the more popular one especially in terms of gaming is because this is the cheapest in terms of computational cost involved and it's accurate enough so that's why Pajega model is used and what happens over here is so since I was playing the game and I was driving a 2014 BMW M4 GTS coupe these are the specs and I thought I should just use I picked up a random tire data from the internet I use the curve fit equation uh, for that tire model and then i try to implement a curve fit over here so essentially as you can see this is the spec sheet uh, you have the driver 160 pounds i use my weight like all these equations uh, i'll share this file with you guys on my youtube video link so over here you have the calculations you will have the k oversteer factor Essentially, it's the coefficient which tells us if the car is going to oversteer or understeer. So right now, the coefficient is higher at rear wheels and lower at front wheels. So that's what it's saying, oversteer. If it was higher at front wheels, it would say understeer. This is the cornering coefficient values for front, left, right, rear, left, rear, right. Lateral force, cornering stiffness. So cornering stiffness is nothing but lateral force per slip angle. So essentially if the tire is very stiff or rigid, then you'll have less of a slip angle at higher lateral force. Vertical loads over here on front, left, right, rear, left and rear, right as given over here. And this is our tire modeling specifications. Here I have mentioned all the factors. So in this particular example, or at least for this video, we are only going to be talking about lateral force. We are not going to be talking about the longitudinal force and the slip ratio. So this data is just for your information to read and making your life easy. Um, this one is the one where we'll be dealing with for most of our calculations uh, with, right? So you have all these factors, these are like the smaller factors and these are the bigger factors, quote unquote, for the lack of a better word, if you want to call it that way. And like this is what these stand for. So C is a shape factor, D is a peak factor, B, C, D is a stiffness, stiffness factor and all that. You, you get all that. 
and these are calculated in this way so c shape factor is essentially equals to a0 the value lies between 1.2 to 1.8 you can take 1.4 as a sample value so you get the idea these are the main factors these are the sub factors the formula for the main factor this is what the main factors stand for and this is how these main factors are calculated including the sub factors so this is the calculation i have done this is the front left this is what i have done over here and similar calculation i have done for the front right as well so this is a simple spreadsheet i have made i'm by tweaking some values i have other parameters as well i wanted to do a more comprehensive spreadsheet with more values but uh, i kind of thought that this would be enough for now so that's why I stopped myself over here. So let's bring down the tire pressure values to 32 PSI for both front and rear. Max and the min value you can see. So let's go get onto the calculation tab. As you can see right now, we have our slip angle at 10 degrees. So 10 degrees, if you ask me, which is high enough, which is I think beyond the peak. But right now, as you can see for 10 degrees, we have the vehicle oversteering just by a one point slightly higher tendency to oversteer lateral force on the front left uh, is 2139 so the load on front left is higher obviously because we have the driver sitting on the front left uh, lateral force front left versus front right so let's see let's take it all the way down to zero degrees so, okay though no calculation as it increases to one degree since we are making right hand turn that means the vehicle is going like this if you can see it on my cursor if the vehicle is going like this the weight shift would be on the left side of the tire left side of the car so the late more vertical force on the left side uh, tire more vertical force means a higher lateral force and that's why you have a higher force uh, force value for the lateral force on the front left as we keep on increasing both the values increase but it kind of increases more for the front left as i keep on increasing 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 after some time it should taper off as you can see it doesn't increase that much but the right one increases so 26 26 26 25 now now it's tapering off so this is how the and we, we remember the tire graph for lateral force was a slip angle kind of goes like this. It goes to a peak and then it tapers off and it reduces after some time. So that's what we are seeing over here. The front left, the value on, I think it's C13 cell number is now kind of stable, reducing. Reducing for the most part, but not by a significant degree. So essentially it's like tapered off. And at this one, the cornering stiffness value, if there is a 40 degree of slip angle which is yeah kind of uh, ridiculous but then again for that later to force the cornering stiffness is 62 so essentially in an ideal world what we want is we do not want our tire to deform yeah, yeah we want our tire to stay rigid and generate the maximum amount of lateral force uh, whatever is possible so in this case if we would want this to be as low as possible and this one to be as high as possible and again and this would lead to be this cornering stiffness value to be a higher number which essentially means that higher cornering stiffness is better for our calculations i hope you guys understood this video uh, my explanation on the pajeka tire model uh, in case you guys have any questions comments concerns please the, leave them in the comment section section below and if you have any video ideas for my channel, let me know and I'll try to make a video for it in as soon as possible. Also, one more thing I wanted to add, uh, this lateral force is only, this Pajega formula is only for lateral force. It's not for combined slip. So what happens is whenever you are riding a vehicle, it goes forward. Uh, you are making a turn while accelerating as well. So you have longitudinal force acting and lateral force acting as well. So right now the formula I'm using is only for lateral force. We are not considering effects of the longitudinal force. 
just to give you guys a heads up but again um, if you have any questions comments or concerns leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you all next time in the next video bye take care